Hello, my loves. Welcome in to this video. Thank you so much for being here. So it is 11 o'clock on 11 11 and I'm opening up this discussion and meditation to invite us into ending the war within ourselves. Now, this isn't to say that you're responsible for everything going wrong in the world. This is about empowering you to know where your power is and to invite you into activating it. Your power is within your ability to change your thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. Your thoughts, words, deeds, and actions, not anyone else's. That is why we're working on ending the war within ourselves, because we have the power to do that. We have the power to end the war within ourselves. And so I want to empower you to bring peace within you, because that is where it starts from. And thankfully, that's what you have the most power to do. You have the power to end the war within yourself. And that will have ripple effects in the world that we see, not only in how we show up for our communities, for our, the places of employment, for wherever we are going in our world. It also is going to have ripple effects in the greater consciousness and the greater collective. So what we're going to do is we're going to end the war within ourselves. Now, how do we end the war within ourselves? Well, we end it through understanding. So this is the most powerful, powerful thing that we can do is understand what is this war? So the war that's within you, that's within me, that's within every person in the human experience right now, this war is the war between our instinct and our intellect. Now, in order to understand why these two parts of us have been battling, we need to understand the misconception that we've had particularly about our instincts. We were taught to believe, um, based on the current scientific data of the day by Darwin, that our instincts were animalistic, that they are savage, that they are competitive, that they are greedy, that they are survival of the fittest oriented. Now with that belief about what our instinctual nature is, the war between instincts and intellect could never end. Because the intellect had it wrong. The intellect wasn't at the point of understanding the truth about our instincts. And all the instincts have ever wanted was for the intellect to understand them. Now, what is the truth about our instinctual nature? Well, current science is saying that our instinctual nature is actually based on love, cooperation, altruism, which is acting ideally, which is acting for the good of the whole over the good of the self. That our instinctual nature is actually loving, kind, supportive. And this makes sense, right? This makes sense for why it's so upsetting for us to see humanity at large and even ourselves acting in ways that are not loving, cooperative, collaborative, supportive. I'm checking the time here because I would like to start the meditation at 1111. 11. So we got some more time to talk about this concept because the real hearing, the real healing comes from understanding. So the instincts are actually loving, supportive, into, um, altruistic. And this is something that Charles Darwin actually didn't study humans. He didn't write the, his theory of evolution, which we can now understand is more of a theory of development. But anyway... He wrote that he was leaving the human development, the story of human development, up to somebody else to discover. He literally wrote that in his essay about where the survival of the fittest came from, okay? The evolution of species, I think it's called. So he didn't, he, he admitted he didn't know what the instinctual, what the origin of the instinctual nature of man was. He admitted he couldn't, he couldn't even conquer the subject. He couldn't understand. He didn't have the intellectual understanding to explain our instinctual nature as a species. This is very, very important because the whole battle that's been going on between our instincts and our intellect, the whole battle that's been going on within ourselves is this battle against our loving, 
altruistic, compassionate, cooperative, instinctual nature, which was developed for 10 million years by our ape ancestors who lived in ideal nursery conditions, who held, nurtured, loved, supported their offspring until they were fully developed, prolonged nurturing that lasted over six years, which created an entire species of apes that lived altruistically, lovingly. This is our ancestry. This is the origin of our human instinctual nature. It was 10 million years of genetic development that led to this loving, cooperative nature that is within all of us. Now, two million years ago, the intellect developed, okay? The ability to create cause and, cause and effect correlations, to look at something and see how it played out and then to make a different choice. So the intellect has been developing for two million years and for the intellect to understand through cause and effect, it had to do things that went against our instinctual nature. And it didn't even have an understanding of the fact that that's what it was doing. So it couldn't explain itself to the instinctual nature who has no idea why all of a sudden we stopped acting cooperatively and, and lovingly and altruistically towards each other. The intellect had to understand through cause and effect over and over again, making choices that were either ideal or not ideal and learning from them to get us to this developmental stage where we can now consciously understand our instincts as loving, cooperative, and nurturing. And now that the intellect has finally found the understanding, has finally gone through enough cause and effect experiment to truly understand our instinctual nature as loving, kind, cooperative, collaborative, now with this understanding, we can finally end the war within us. Our instincts and intellect can merge together. Our intellect has had to be in the driver's seat with the decision making. Whereas with animals, the instinct is always making the decisions. And that's actually natural. We want our instincts to be making these decisions because there is so much genetic understanding and orientation that's already there, that's already aligned with the natural world, that already knows how to act in altruistically in a society. We don't need our intellect to tell us how to do that. We need our intellect to take a back seat, to trust our instinctual nature, to guide us, to lead us towards love, compassion, cooperation, because it's in our DNA. Our genetic ancestry is to be loving, cooperative, and collaborative. And our intellect hasn't understood that until now. Our intellect is beautiful. It's bright. It's amazing. But it has had to make choices that went against our loving nature in order to understand it. Our instincts hasn't been very loving and understanding to our intellect either because they didn't have, they don't have an ability to understand. They just have an orientation towards collaboration, cooperation, and the instinctual pursuit of knowledge has been in conflict with that. And now that we have this knowledge of who we are, where we came from, our eight ancestors were loving, altruistic, cooperative, collaborative species. We have 10 million years of genetic development towards that orientation. Two million years of orientation towards cause and effect. Trial and error. Making mistakes. Acting non-ideal. In order to learn what it is to be human. What it is to be altruistic. What it is to be loving. But we don't actually need to know we just need to trust the instinctual nature. The intellect is taking a back seat. It's saying, okay, I understand. I understand that our instincts are loving. I understand that there's part of our instinctual nature I don't understand yet, but I'm going to let my instincts lead. I'm going to let my instincts guide me to what's most collaborative, cooperative, and compassionate. And then the intellect can understand by watching the cause and effect that happens after the instinct guides. But the intellect could never take a back seat until it had this understanding because that was the whole purpose of why the intellect developed in the first place, to help our species develop a capacity to adapt to change in our environment far quicker than the instinctual adaptation, which takes generations. Intellect can adapt within minutes, moments, okay? This is the war that's going on within us. And I hope I explained it well. Please, if you're curious about this topic, you want to learn more, it's piqued your interest, it feels good, it feels true, look at Jeremy Griffith's information linked in the description. There is an interview of his book, Freedom. There's a link to the free book on his website. 
Freedom, the end of the human condition. Check it out and get ready to let your instinctual, loving, cooperative, collaborative, compassionate nature make peace with your intellect, cause and effect, need to understand aspect of your being that has been acting non-ideally up to this point. I invite you just to take a few deep breaths to start closing your eyes. There was a lot of information that I just offered up. We're shifting out of closed. We're going to continue to focus on our breath. Take a deep breath in and just let go of anything that you're holding that feels heavy. <sighs> Take a few more deep breaths like this, breathing in and letting go of anything that feels heavy right now. <sighs> Taking another deep breath in and letting go of anything that feels heavy. Return to your normal breathing, your normal breath. And just imagine that coming down from the ceiling is a beautiful sparkling light. It can be any color. If you don't feel or see a color, just imagine it being white or intend that it's white. And it's just helping to relax any parts of your body that feel tense or tight right now. So just go through your body and start to loosen the jaw, the shoulders. Let the belly just release and be as it is. Breathe into any tight muscles in the back or the hips or the knees or the neck. As you exhale, exhale, exhale the tension. Breathe in this light into your body, and as you exhale, exhale into relaxation. <sighs> Relaxing your body with each exhale, breathing in the light with each inhale. Allowing yourself to settle into this practice, this experience, this meditation. As you return to your normal breath, and you bring your focus and your awareness into your heart space, I like to do this by actually placing my hand on my heart, but you can do it however you want to. Just be aware of your heart space. Feel into it. Acknowledge its presence. And acknowledge whatever is there, even if it's painful or heavy or dense. Just be with it. Notice it. Honor it. We're going to sink into this heart space, going deeper and deeper into this heart space, imagining it like a cave. Going deeper and deeper into the space within us. For me, it's like a warm underground home with a fire in the hearth and roots and trees all around, or roots and dirt all around. And feel the energy of the trees above the surface. But whatever space you want to imagine within your heart is really up to you. For me, it's a cave and kind of a warm, comforting home. But whatever you're seeing in your heart space could be a room, could be a white light, could be a natural setting, a beach, could be a forest. There's no right or wrong here. So whatever comes up for you is perfect, but you're imagining what your heart space looks like. And then I want you to invite in the two energies within yourself that have been at war. Invite in your instincts. And however you want to represent your instincts is perfect. They can be represented by a heart or by your body. They can be represented by a star. 
Whatever it is that comes to you is perfect and right. So see them enter the space. Have intend that they're coming in. Feel the presence of your instinctual nature, your genetic inheritance. Feel it enter the room. And for a moment, connect with the truth that I just shared in the discussion. The truth that this instinctual nature is to be loving, kind, cooperative, collaborative, altruistic, selfless, nurturing. Connect with over 10 million years of genetic adaptation and orientation towards this loving instinctual nature. Feel it. See if you can really bring in an awareness, a sensation of that instinctual nature that is you, that is within you, that is represented in your body by your heart. Take a moment to truly, maybe even for the first time, connect with this instinctual nature that is you, releasing the belief that your instincts are clean competitive, aggressive, greedy, selfish. Apologizing if you need to, to your instincts, forever believing that is the case. And as we hold this awareness of this instinctual nature within us in our heart space, however it's manifesting for us, we also call in our intellect. Bring in your intellectual side. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Maybe it has a voice. Maybe it has an essence. Maybe it's just a light or a brain or a vibration. Maybe it's a computer. Whatever it is, bring it in to your heart space and acknowledge it under the context that we just discussed. This has been a brave bold, confused part of ourselves. Having to learn through cause and effect without having any understanding two million years ago. Our intellect has been developing and learning through trial and error. Through taking non-ideal actions and ideal actions and suffering from the pain that our instincts feel when we don't act cooperatively. But the intellect has been needing to continue the search for knowledge, the search for understanding, without even knowing that that's what it's doing. Because without that understanding, it cannot take a back seat to the instinctual guidance. It needs to understand. So just feel your intellect, maybe feel all of that upset that has been caused by the intellect and all of the pain that has come from simple trial and error, from just trying to figure it out and understand. And see if you can see your intellect as a hero. It is not the enemy here going against the instinct as we have thought. Although it has been the source of our competitive, greedy, aggressive, selfish nature, that has only been because it has been trying to understand. And that hasn't been easy. And it's been lonely and it's been hard but our intellect finally can understand the truth of our instinctual loving nature, the value of our instinctual loving nature, the purpose of our instinctual loving nature so that we can come together and unite and form larger, more stable wholes as a species. And to do so with the intellectual capacity to adapt to changes in our environment far quicker than the generations that it takes for the instinctual genetic development to occur. We can now see these two sides coming together in understanding 
and appreciation and love for each other. Let's just take a moment to feel these two sides. If there's anything that they need to say to each other, let them speak. Let your mind perhaps apologize for not understanding the instinctual nature or let your instincts apologize for not understanding the heroic journey that the intellect has been on. And see these two sides coming together in an embrace or a handshake or just a hug. See these two sides merging together. Coming to an agreement, the intellect is agreeing to take a back seat now. To not be in the forefront of our decisions. To allow and to trust our loving, cooperative, collaborative, altruistic, instinctual nature to lead the way. And we can still learn. The intellect knows it is still learning. By allowing the instincts to make a choice, it learns from the effects that those choices have. And the more it learns, the more it trusts the instincts to guide. Now here's a simple, simple promise that I'm going to invite you to make to your instinctual nature. And it's going to seem so silly <laughs> and so superficial and just let it be silly and superficial. The promise of the, ins uh, the, promise of the intellect to the instinct is to listen and honor the instinctual impulse to use the bathroom. <laughs> that if the instincts are telling you in a moment that we need to use the restroom, we need to pee or we need to poop, <laughs> the intellect doesn't come in and say, well, this person's talking right now, so I'm gonna hold my pee until they're done talking because it would be rude. Or it won't come say, well, I don't want to pee here. This is an uncomfortable this is an uncomfortable environment for me to use the bathroom in. I'm going to hold it until we get somewhere else. And we're making this promise because it's one of the simplest ways to feel what an instinctual impulse feels like and then to witness and honor and be aware of the intellect's habit of trying to override that instinctual impulse. Because the instincts are still giving us information all the time. They've never stopped giving us feedback. But the intellect has overridden so many of our instinctual urges, guidances. That this is where we're healing the relationship. The instinct is, a, is showing us we need to use the restroom. We need to, the most loving thing for us to do right now is to relieve our bladder. Is to relieve our intestinal tract. I'm going to honor that, the in intellect will say. And it'll intellectualize what the best way for you to get to a bathroom is, right? It'll guide you there. But you'll start to feel what that instinctual guidance to pee feels like. And then you'll start to feel it happening in other places for other guidance that's coming through. And you'll hear what it sounds like when the mind is over overruling, is doubting is coming up with a reason not to follow the instinct. And you'll start to feel and hear and acknowledge what that sounds like. And you'll notice it happening in other, search, other circumstances, other situations beyond this very silly, very easy, very practical example of instinct versus intellect. So that is the promise that the intellect is making to listen to the instinctual guidance to pee and to learn what the instinctual guidance feels like 
and to recognize when the intellect is overriding it with doubt and fear and worries. The intellect now is ready to let the instinct guide, to learn how to let the instinct guide, because it won't be automatic. It'll take time, it'll take practice, and both sides know this and don't hold it against each other. Both sides know that this is a new experience and it's a change in our lives and with change comes difficulty, comes practice, comes repetition. And both sides agree that ending this war is worth the uncomfortableness of change. And that both sides are going to benefit immensely from this new relationship that they are forming. And we're just going to stay in our heart space for a little bit longer, connecting with our instinct and our intellect and having any other dialogue, conversation, any other agreements that you want to make. Maybe the instinct agrees not to get so frustrated with the intellect when it overrides it, to understand that that's habit now, and to work patiently with the intellect as it learns how to take the back seat how to let the instinctual urge be felt and honored and acted upon. Just sit with these two sides. Maybe you feel them embrace. Maybe they're sharing a cup of tea together. Maybe they're snuggling up together in front of a fire. Whatever feels good and right to you. Just take some time to really feel what does it look like to you to have both of these sides at peace with each other. What does it feel like? and your instinct both finally know that each other are worthy, that they're valuable, and that they're appreciated. And when you are ready, allow yourself to zoom out of your heart bringing your awareness back into your full body, leaving your instinct and intellect inside of your heart, merged as one with the intellect agreeing to let the instincts lead. And as you become more aware of your body, just slowly bring movement back into it, keeping your eyes closed, but slowly bring movement back into your hands back into your feet, back into your body, still feeling this union of instinct and intellect within your heart, this peace within your heart. When you are ready, you can flutter your eyes open. Take a deep breath. And come out of the meditation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for this meditation, for this discussion. Thank you so much for allowing that beautiful instinctual knowing within you to lead the way as our beautiful intellectual knowing gets to see cause and effect from a new perspective and gets to understand it for the first time. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. If you want to dialogue about this further, I'm here. I love this topic. I think it's so powerful and profound for our healing. And I love you for being willing and open. The universal light within me salutes and honors the universal light within you. Namaste. Namaste.